what are the main players in an identity management system? You have an identity provider which issues identity, okay? So here, Purdue University might issue me a username, password. It can also issue me digital certificates certifying that I am a computer science student or, you know, certificates can assert different properties. Then you have relying parties or you have the service providers which basically give you services and these services can be online. So I'm basically considering service providers which are online. And then we have subjects, which can be individuals who need these services, right? Okay, so step by step, consider a student of Purdue. Let's call him Pete. Okay, so you have Pete who wants to access an online book in IU, okay? IU doesn't know, they, he doesn't have a login password for IU. So IU requests uh, Pete, I don't know who you are, so it pops up uh, on the browser something called WAYF, stands for where are you from, okay? This where are you from will basically ask Pete, select one of the institutions in this federation as your home institution, who would know who you are, where you can be actually authenticated. Pete's like, okay. He, provi he selects in the drop-down list uh, the institution. So this page looks like this. You can see Purdue University, and we can actually do that now. Uh, you can select the Purdue University and be redirected to the Purdue University authentication web page. Over there, so it, Pete gets redirected to Purdue. Uh, it can be LDAP. Whatever Purdue uses to uh, authenticate, that mechanism can be used. So it opens a familiar uh, browser which asks for the username <coughs> password. Then Pete provides his username and password. It could be other credentials, depending on the service. It could be a smart card, some biometric. But whatever uh, Purdue needs to authenticate. At this point, Purdue knows who uh, this subject is and is able to retrieve more information about the subject, considering that each of the identity provider has a record of information about this particular user. Okay? So to keep the privacy of Pete, uh, the identity provider would not go, in this case, Purdue would not go to IU and say, hey, I have all this information about Pete. Instead, he will make a handle, or Purdue will make a handle at step eight to um, be able to communicate about this subject. So this random handle does not give any information about Pete other than the fact that Pete is authenticated, and I can give you more information about Pete. Okay? So the if... For the online book, Pete needs to be a CS student and uh, say needs 12 credit hours. So at step nine, using that handle, the IU actually asks for those credentials. The IU says, I need these and these, uh, this and this information. So now Purdue will check if this information can be released to IU or would the consent of Pete be required. So based on that, this information is given at step 10 to uh, IU which results in uh, satisfying all the conditions that is needed to get the original request of Pete at step one. So this, uh, this basically shows how the system works. And then at each step, there, there's a very well-defined way of how the request is made, and um, it's a very efficient uh, procedure. And one can, and about 200 institutions can replace the service provider here at this particular time. So what are the key benefits of using Shibboleth? The remote service providers do not have to manage the user lists, a list for every institution that uses their service. So IU does not have to make a list of all possible users that may come from different institutions. It also allows home institutions to protect their identities from their users, uh, from remote services, provides uh, privacy. Because what happens is, that if I can, uh, again, the minimal amount of information has to be given to the other service providers. I may trust Purdue for uh, securing certain kinds of information, but may not want to release uh, a lot of information to the service providers providing the services. So how do I uh, keep the minimal amount of information and keep myself uh, anonymous as much as possible to the different service providers? Then it also leverages the existing authentication systems at home institutions. This is a very important point because it is not trying to build a whole new system and remove all that existed before. 
This is on top of the current authentication system uh, that is being used today and just adds another layer to be able to uh, do the collaboration. And again, it gives a flexible distributed architecture that, suppose a variety, that supports a variety of usage scenarios. So I just gave one example, and there could be different ways in which you can authenticate uh, a user in a distributed environment. Now, having done the, uh, the basics of identity management system, I would now like to go into one of the main security problems in any identity management system. So one of the main reasons why security problems exist is because of the contradictory requirements. Because on one hand, you need availability and usability. You want this information to be shared so that you don't have to keep on giving the same information everywhere, be able to easily access services. But at the same time, you want privacy and security. You don't want the wrong people to get this information. This is like web logs you want everybody to see, but they, you don't want them to, uh, you don't want anybody to see which newspaper you're reading or which eBay product you're buying. So there are two contradictory requirements. And one is that of identity, and no, it's not a requirement. And one problem is that of identity theft. Because um, what is identity theft is the use of personally identifying information belonging to one individual by another individual for financial and personal gain. This is a really serious problem and is being taken up um, by different uh, institutions. And the way they deal with it is depending on the type of attack vector. A very uh, well-known way of describing the different threat is by looking at the different attack vectors. You can look at it in the technical aspect, the physical aspect, and social engineering aspect. And all three of them are very real and um, we consider them as we are developing solutions for one area. In the technical aspect, you have farming, network sniffing, keyboard loggers, database attacks. <clears throat> so you can have a lot of um, technical, attack, uh, technical attacks. On the physical attack, not enough people are shedding their mail, so you have dump dumpster drive diving, you have trusted insiders, you have just theft and loss. Then you have the social engineering aspect where you can have the legal identity sources. You can, like the one we saw earlier, then you can have phishing. You can have family members trying to get information. So there are different, um, there, there, there are different reasons, um, the ways of, of attacking uh, identity system. And the recent uh, FTC report shows that 37% of the entire set of complaints, which was 686,000 complaints, leading to a huge number, as you can see there, um, a huge amount of it is just identity theft. So it's a big problem. That's a, and what are the main causes? So before we look into how we can solve it, we have to check, OK, what are the main causes of identity theft? The, the main uh, problem is that the, there's a loss of control. It is easy for identity thieves to assert that they are someone else with the right data. So, for example, my sister's mail comes to our same house. I can see the last four digits of a social security number, which are given for security purposes. But guess what? That is sufficient for me to assert that I am her if I'm calling up a financial institution. So I know the date of birth. I know the social security number, only the last four digits. and. Uh, a bunch of information which friends, family might easily know, and an adversary can know that too. So that is the first problem. It's, it's easy to prove that you're someone else based on some data which you, can achieve, which you can get. Second problem is that the actual victims may find it difficult to prove that they are themselves. If someone a actually went off and uh, got their identity, a, uh, a real person may have a very tough time getting back their identity. So uh, one, has to, uh, one has to take into account that there is already a lot of information uh, of individuals available at different places. So there is information which I can't take back. You can't start issuing new social security numbers, new different, each and every attribute cannot be reissued just because it was available at one point. So a solution has to take into account that this information is already there. 